Hello, I'm Chris Hill, Director of Safety at Helicopter Association International, and we are here with Airbus Director of Education, Bruce Webb. How's it going, Bruce? Awesome. We're having a great show. It's day two. Fantastic. The weather is cleared, and uh, yeah, it's awesome. Everyone, everyone, we've met people who are uh, senior aviators to fledgling aviators. It's been fantastic. Thanks, Bruce. So. We're here in front of you, H-125, excellent helicopter. No matter how good the airframe is, there's certain things we got to do, and we're focusing today on slowing down, making sure you focus your attention on the right things before you go into your flight duties. Right. Tell us more about that. Right. So as, as whether we're the pilot or the technician working on the aircraft, we must slow down. There's something called cognitive inertia, and so when we rush, if we rush to arrive at the aircraft to pre-flight, or we rush to arrive at the aircraft to do the daily or to prepare it for flight, we're not robots. So we, if we rush to arrive, we will continue to rush for potentially up to 90 minutes. So what we need to do is we need to slow down, relax, and treat this with the respect it deserves. So that's a great point, Bruce. So uh, last year we did a spotlight on safety video basically entitled slow your roll we're really trying to emphasize these things in that video we talked about three key points that we try to slow people down intentionally one the pre-flight the pre-flight walk around which we can talk about the difference between both the actual checklist that you have in your operator's manual before you perform a flight and one key check is the hover check right let's unpack each one of those individually right. super so pre-flighting i would encourage everyone to take the time to pull out the checklist, either the manufacturer's checklist, the one that every helicopter manufacturer produces and it's in the Rotorcraft flight manual, or alternatively, if you don't want to use that, you don't have to use our checklist. You could build your own checklist, have your POI or PMI approve it, but regardless, have a checklist, use the checklist, follow it, follow it, and slow down, and, and again, Take the time on the ground so that you're not second guessing yourself when you're in flight. The second component of this was your cockpit checks, your, your, your pre-start check, your start checklist, all of that. Again, follow a checklist. It, 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 it is so important. We're all capable of error. Checklists protect us against those errors. So slow down and use the checklist. And the final thing Chris, Chris mentioned was the hover checks. I say it just slightly differently. And what I say is it's, it's, it starts even before you pick it to a hover. It starts when you start applying power to bring the ship to a hover. So as you're coming up on the collective, increasing pitch, increasing lift, and the ship is becoming light on the surface, as you have to compensate for torque, you know, winds, etc. Pay attention. If you find that you're, you don't have sufficient pedal margin or flight control margin or something doesn't feel right, you have asymmetrical loads, anything like that, stop. Put the collective down, stop doing what you're doing, and sort it out. What happens too often is people get ready to go and maybe ATC gives them a clearance and they think, expedite, and they rip it into the air and too often that ends in disaster. Yeah, so a couple of times, you know, when I've talked about the idea of a hover check, there's plenty of pilots who explain those situations, those scenarios where that may not be an option. But ideally, like you said, there's a way to test the performance of your aircraft before you go into that no hover takeoff because the conditions favor right. that in that situation. Right. You also mentioned something else, the checklist itself and needing to do the checklist. I recall a time when I had my chief pilot at a base told me, don't let the client see you using the checklist. They yeah. think you don't know what you're doing. Right. We've certainly come a long way from right. that. And right. if, any, if any operator out there has a client that is concerned about your aptitude and your ability to fly an aircraft because you have to refer to a checklist, don't get indignant about it. Slow down, explain the situation that this is absolutely for their safety. We are going to do this every time. Right. We, we, it's, a, it's a sworn duty that we do to protect you as right. a client. Right. In fact, it's so important, the medical profession adopted the use of checklists. The medical profession adopted the use. So, you know, you wouldn't want your brain surgeon not following a checklist. 
You want people to, when it's important enough to do correctly, it's important enough to use a checklist. So do that. Yes. So uh, as we wrap up here, a, a, an ideal metaphorical finish is when you finish a flight and you're getting ready to hand it over to maybe you tomorrow or the next pilot 15 minutes from now, that you need to do them a favor. What else, what else is on the list for what we need to do? Well, if, if you're going, when you're finished flying, first of all, make sure that you do a proper post-flight because that's when you really want to capture any problems with the aircraft because you don't want to wait until you hand it over to somebody else and, and allow them to find something wrong, number one. But number two, if you have any issues, make sure you document them, you, 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 you annotate them, you log them, so that if, if maintenance is required, if something's required, it's, it's accomplished. And, and perhaps the, the most important is, you know, we, safety is paramount in our business. So treat the person that's following you with the respect you'd like them to treat you with and make sure you've helped brief them on anything that may affect the safety of their flight. Excellent points, Bruce, thanks for that. And a final takeaway message, always remember, slow is smooth and smooth is fast enough. <laughs>